Coming up in today's show, stocks rise on the back of strong earnings and a continued pullback in oil and bond yields. We'll go over some big tech earnings and other companies that have just reported. We'll look at what's going on in the bond market, along with what's happening in the Middle East and oil, and what's sending Bitcoin ripping higher. Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to the Click Capital Daily Market Show. I'm your host, Jared, and I'm going to get you updated with everything that's going on out there in the financial markets. And we are just getting into the thick of Q3 earnings season, which helps stocks finish pretty good here today. Mostly green across the board with tech leading the way. It was only really energy, oil and gas stocks that came down after a continued pullback in crude. Then we saw some good pops in utilities with one of my favorites, Next Era Energy, up almost 7%, along with 3M up over 5% and Verizon up over 9%, all on the back of good earnings, which I'll get into a bit later on in the charts. However, we just had the two big ones report Google and Microsoft after hours. First, we'll take a look at Microsoft, the second biggest stock in the market. They just posted revenue of 56.5 billion that's up 13 percent from a year ago and more than 2 billion ahead of wall street estimates and earnings per share came in at $2.99 ahead of consensus as well that which was $2.65 a share the azure cloud business grew 28 percent and so one of the strongest stocks of the last couple of years continues to remain strong and even though we've been drifting sideways here for a few months the market seems to like this latest quarterly earnings report. We're currently up 3.5% after hours as I speak. We've also just heard from Alphabet, the third largest company in the US stock market and owner of Google, YouTube, Android. They also delivered stronger than expected quarterly results with revenue coming in at 76.69 billion, up 11% from a year ago, a little bit higher than estimates and same deal with earnings at a buck 55 a share ahead of consensus at a buck 46. And Google also saw their cloud revenue jump 22% year over year. Also helping the stock was the fact they repurchased 15.8 billion worth of shares in the quarter. Pretty good amount. And that's what's helped Alphabet being the best performing stock out of the mega cap techs the last couple of months. However, it looks like the market may be using this as a bit of an opportunity to take some profit because I can see after hours we're selling down 6.6% and contrasting the price action in Microsoft a bit. And that's helping to pull the NASDAQ queues down after hours as I speak a little bit as well. So we've still got a bit more big tech earnings on the way, but so far so good in their reported numbers. And we'll just have to see how the market reacts to these earnings. Right now it's a little mixed with we're trading up on the Microsoft shares and trading down in Alphabet. And it's really been the mega cap tech trade this year that's really helped the Nasdaq and the S&P 500 rise a lot and all of the big stocks have really helped that high. Nvidia, Netflix and Meta have all seen big gains this year. We saw Netflix move up again today after their really good earnings report last week. It's defending that gap but we've still got some big ones to come. Amazon in two days. Meta tomorrow, and then the big fella Apple in nine days. So judging by the others' results, they too should come in with good numbers. But more important is the market's reaction to that. Because the Nasdaq's looking a lot like the price action in Apple here. Just trying to hold on to this support. And definitely in a sideways ranging market for the last couple of months. And we did pop up a little bit today, almost 1%, but it was on weak volume. Same deal with S&P 500. We bounced a little bit here today, but again on low volume. And stick with me because I'll come back to all the charts later on. We're also getting a bunch of other earnings coming out today, including Verizon, which even though third quarter revenue declined 2.6%, they did come in a little bit above expectations. Same with earnings per share at buck twenty-two ahead of $1.18 expected. And believe it or not, the company is still growing in customers. They added 434,000 new broadband customers, 72,000 new customers to its Fios internet, and also 100,000 post paid phone connections over the third quarter. They also increased their outlook of free cash flow to above 18 billion. That's a billion more than its prior guidance. And the market absolutely loved that report, having its best day in years, up a huge 9.2% on big volume. And my regular viewers will know this has been one of my favorites. I've been mentioning over the last couple of weeks and we did put in a good bullish divergence on both my indicators here it's managed to hold ground after it paid out the dividend and in my opinion it's still good long-term value reporting a buck 22 in earnings per share just for the third quarter and it's still only a 34 dollars stock and my stock fair value indicator still has fair value at 57 dollars a share so we may have put in a bottom here on verizon and you remember it really got whacked hard after that news back in mid-july of all the lead cables and cleanup they had to do but like we see in the market quite often traders overreacted and the sell-off got a bit overdone similar story for another one of my favorite beaten down stocks next era energy focused on solar wind they are a renewable energy utility stock that got beaten down with the utility sector over the last couple of months. They just reported third quarter 
earnings of 94 cents a share, up 85 cents from the same quarter last year. Management reaffirmed its 2023 EPS guidance and a 6 to 8% annual earnings growth expectations through 2026. The market also really loved this report too. The stock finishing up almost 7% today in trading to a little bit above $55 a share. You guys remember I first mentioned it to you back on the 6th of October when we put in this hammer. Candle formation, a bit below $50 a share. So this too may have put in a bottom. However, like the utility sector as a whole, that's going to largely depend on interest rates, whether they're topped out or not, which I'll get into a bit later on as well. Another one of my favorites, old economy stocks on my watch list that I think is undervalued. 3M as well came in with a good result today, reporting third quarter earnings of $2.68 a share. That was actually 28 cents above the upper end of the company's own guidance range and a lot better than Wall Street analysts were expecting two of $2.34. They also raised their full year guidance and they now expect to make between $8.95 and $9.15 a share. Market like that report as well finishing their day up 5.2 percent and that was coming off some pretty hard lows over the last couple of months we traded down from almost 110 down to the mid 80s so we'll see whether that can hold as well looking at a bunch of other earnings on big stocks we had visa come in a little bit better than expected beating by three percent shares were up 1.3 percent coca-cola beat eps estimates by six and a half percent shares finished the day up almost three percent spotify had a really good report showing a profitable quarter for the first time ever absolutely smashing analyst expectations delivering 34 cents a share and earnings caught the market by surprise finished the day up 10.3 percent so another big earnings beat from general electric coming above expectations by 45 percent delivering 82 cents per share in earnings market also loved that up 6.5 percent and finally defense contractor rtx coming in with a slight beat and market also loved that up 7%. So, so far so good. Historically on average, 77% of companies will beat estimates as generally management in the street like to set the bar a little bit low so they can get that positive headline, please investors and everyone else that they're doing better than expected. So it's not unusual to have most companies beat. However, the size of the beats we're getting are pretty good. And so we could be seeing a bit of a flat line in here in corporate earnings and the economy as well, along with the jobs market is holding up pretty good, which is pretty impressive in the face of that really steep rise in interest rates we've seen over the last year and a half. And so even though we've got some weakness still in the Eurozone, as we can see with the PMIs today, still under 50 and contracting, same deal in the UK. America is doing a bit better than the Euro economies with their PMIs now back into expansion and coming in a bit better than expected today. However, that strong economic data didn't really seem to get bond yields moving back up. We just pulled back slightly again today with a 10 year now sitting at 481, but a little bit of a bounce back in short term rate with the two year now at 5.10. So if the economy holds up and earnings keep coming in a lot better than expected, along with going into a bullish seasonal period of the fourth quarter and the fourth quarter of a pre-election year, which typically tends to end higher as well, there's still big risks out there for the stock market with probably the most persistent one being a resurgence in inflation. We have seen the CPI tick up a little bit over the last couple of months. However, for the most part, the bond market and the stock market is expecting inflation to come back down and not see a 1970s style resurgence. And it's going to be hard for the stock market to keep rallying into Christmas. If that 10 year treasury yield climbs above 5%, we really need to see bond yields cool their jets to give the stock market some good footing to keep going higher. Another risk to the market is if credit conditions keep deteriorating. Seen a lot of consumers being denied credit, credit card balances and interest repayments getting to all time highs. And so credit's like the engine of the economy. If that's been choked, it's hard for the economy to really grow in leaps and bounds. And let's not forget the ballooning federal debt and massive amount of issuance going on by the US Treasury. With the latest two year treasury auction today, seen soft demand signaling that investor enthusiasm for treasuries continues to weaken amid concerns over the federal deficit and path of interest rates. And so even though the yield came in as expected on the auction 5.05%, it was the other important metric used to judge the success of an auction, the bid to cover ratio coming in at 2.64. That's lower than the average of the last six auctions of 2.82. And basically a falling bid to cover ratio typically means there are fewer bids relative to the amount of debt being offered indicating less robust interest from investors. So primary dealers will buy up that supply not taken by bidders and they had to accept 17.6% of the notes sold. And that's the largest take since April. And that was on the back of a week sale for a 30 year bond earlier this month. Although the recent 20 year bond did do okay. But like some analysts are saying, there's nothing stopping the 10 year treasury from continuing to surge. 
Just because Bill Ackman came out and covered his treasury short doesn't mean for sure that the bond market has bottomed and yields have topped. And like this analyst says, if we're going to completely uninvert the yield curve, and I think we're destined to do that or somewhere along those lines, then it's going to go at least 5.5%. And that's because when we uninvert, short-term rates will hold steady with the view that the Fed is done our long-term rates will keep climbing to get back to a normal uninverted state of a yield curve. And just like two of the biggest names on Wall Street are saying, JP Morgan's Jamie Dimon and BlackRock's Larry Fink, they both see parallels to the 1970s. And it is kind of a similar setup to the 1970s, what we've got going on now, especially over in the Middle East, which we could be on the verge of a whole regional conflict, similar to the Yom Kippur War in 1973 which saw oil explode higher along with inflation and interest rates a lot higher than people expected, causing the stock market to go nowhere for over a decade. And so like as BlackRock says, the stock market may not have priced in a real chance of coming macro damage. That persistent inflation and higher rates eventually has to cause sending unemployment up and the economy into a recession which has always been a bad thing for stocks. However, for now, like I said before, things are holding up okay, but it does take some time for those higher rates to play out through the economy. And so even though things look really bad going into a recession, they can be a good thing because they make for really fertile ground to pick up long-term investments, high quality businesses and securities at attractive levels, just like Bank of America is saying in this article here. But for now, things are contained in the Middle East. Most of the fighting is going on in the Gaza Strip. There is a little bit of flare-ups in Lebanon, Syria, and some missiles being fired at US bases and ships. However, it hasn't spilled over into a full regional conflict with Hezbollah and doesn't look like Iran has given any other groups the green light to go ahead because the US is warning them, along with Israel and the European alliance at large, that hell is coming for them should they choose to enter this war. So the probabilities for now is that they probably don't and the market seemed to pricing that in. And we can see that with the price of oil pulling back today, actually getting back down lower to when we first got news of the surprise terrorist attack by Hamas militants on October 7. And then we gapped up there on October 9, finishing the day at $86 a barrel. Today we closed at $83.70 a barrel, back down into this support zone. So the counter argument to a higher oil price is that there's already demand destruction going on. People have already pulled back on purchasing gas. The US has lifted sanctions on Venezuela and is likely stepping up US oil production as well to counteract what's going on over there. The Biden administration really doesn't want to see crude oil pop up. That's going to hurt their chances of being re-elected in November next year. And it's quite possible the Saudis and the Russians, along with the Iranians, want to see crude stay around that mid 80s a barrel level kind of their sweet spot they don't want to see demand erode too much either however it could go another way and the wild card is if iran does enter the war and they said they would respond if israel does invade the gaza strip and send troops in there and try and physically take over it israel really wants to do that their defense force said they're ready to go However, the Americans and Europeans are holding them back so they try and negotiate the release of hostages and try and cool things down on both sides. So we'll just have to wait and see if Israel really does go into the Gaza Strip and what sort of response we get out of Iran and the Islamic extremist militant group known as Hezbollah on Israel's northern border. Which it could already be going that way as in recent days Iran has unleashed the regional militias it has spent years arming having launched at least half a dozen military drone and rocket attacks against bases that US troops use in Southeast Syria and in Western and Northern Iraq. So they're right on the verge of full on coming after Israel and American bases and other military assets in the region. And so far the American military has just been defending itself. Half of Iran and the militant groups were to step up this, we may see the US military respond by sending a couple of hundred rockets back their way. Then we're into an official Middle Eastern war and who knows who else may join. And if that were to happen, we probably would get a pretty big oil shock as it could actually upset production, supply and distribution of oil coming out of the Middle East, which still make up a a large part of the world's oil supply and that would take us right back to the mid 1970s with the price action and oil with likely inflation to follow and it's hard to see how stocks wouldn't take a big tumble in that scenario either but hopefully that doesn't happen it's just a tail risk in the market and it's not really good for anyone if it does. Moving on, you may have noticed Bitcoin ripping higher over the last couple of days. Some saying it could get up close to $50,000 by the end of the year. And we touched $35,000 today in a resistance zone on the back of more optimism and excitement that a spot Bitcoin ETF is about to come to the market for the first time. And look at that strong daily price action in Bitcoin. Maybe a bit technically overbought here with my DSi at 24. The whole candle above the buy sell band and we looks like we touched 
and pinged off this big resistance zone around 35,000 and could be putting in a bit of a shooting star formation here. And just zooming out, that's the highest price we've been at all year after consolidating pretty much since March. And just looking at the weekly chart here, it looks like we're putting in a higher high. We could say this is back into a medium term uptrend. Whether it's still in a long term uptrend, I think we'd have to get a bit higher. Above this big $40,000 mark will be the next one. After we've just pulled back at 35,000, we may consolidate here for a bit before going higher. But it looks like the spot Bitcoin ETF is going to go through through, which kind of legitimizes the asset and it's going to allow for a lot of institutional and retail money to come into the space which then they'll have to actually buy physical bitcoins so that is a tailwind for sure just moving on looking at fed fund futures market's still pricing a one in three chance the fed will hike in january as i've been saying we'd really have to see some hot cpi prints to come in for that to happen market's still in the fear zone at 32 on the fear and greed index and still no love from the corporate insiders only recording 27 purchases yesterday just getting into the charts stick with me i'll come back to the s p 500 at the end of this video I'll just quickly go over all the other markets out there looking at international stock indices it's Canada's TSX trying to put in a double bottom on a bullish divergence UK FTSE stalling out on a hammer candle a little bit of a pop-up in the in the German DAX after yesterday's hammer similar pattern in China the Nikkei and the ASX 200 index Global equities all trying to put in a short-term bottom here, turning up a bit today, which has helped the volatility fall back again with the VIX finishing just under 19 and a bit of a pullback in volatility risk premium. Option dealers now asking six full points above realized. And there's a look at the OVX index of crude oil volatility. We can see even prior to the surprise Hamas attack, which the market first got to react to on the 9th of October, oil volatility was already picking up and actually peaked out a little bit three days ago at 48.5% and it's pulled back a bit here. So I'll be keeping an eye on this one going forward. And wasn't that busy a day in the options market? Only 34.7 million contracts traded, but 56% of them were calls. And as you can see here, 49% of the volume in the option market is in options that expire in five days or less with small and retail traders making up 45% of the volume as well. You we can see that in the put call ratio dropping here today down to 0.74 and a little bit of a pickup in breadth measured by the amount of stocks above their 20 day average in the S&P 500 currently at 26%, but still a weak trend in the amount of stocks above their long term 200 day average. And what doesn't bode well for the stock market is breadth measured by new lows versus new highs. Once again, trending in the wrong direction for the market, especially so in the NASDAQ, 162 stocks making new lows today versus 30 new highs more sideways price action and growth sectors versus defensive sectors and there's the nasdaq versus the s p 500 maybe getting into a bit of an uptrend again here after consolidating these last few months the back of those good earnings reports from the tech sector could keep that going higher got another bit of a bounce in tlt today up 1.3 percent on the back of those yields pulling back a bit so this market's really trying to put in a bottom here on heavy volume same with high yield bonds bouncing up a bit here dollars holding strong above its 50-day vwap above 106 and on the back of that fall and crude pulled back the commodity index back below its 50 and gold stalling out a little bit after pulling it back a little bit from two thousand dollars an ounce over to stock sectors mostly a see a green out there energy was the losing sector today down 1.4 percent finishing on its lows and some of the better performing sectors were arc up 2.9 percent bit of a bounce in biotech after being beaten down really bad this last week up 2.4 percent and the utility sector up 2.5 percent on the back of that good earnings beat from its biggest component and my favorite next era energy and just the latest look at microsoft after hours as i speak up 3.4 percent but google still being sold off down 6.5 percent video still holding on here today up 1.6 percent and same with tesla trying to reclaim its support zone around 215 meme stocks had a pretty good day and a little bit of a bounce back in the snack makers as well however still some soft price action in the financials especially those vulnerable regionals haven't been looking too good these last couple of days along with the big guys who have given back all their gains after earnings and some after they also reported a pretty good results a week and a half ago so we'll just have to wait and see whether the market does the same reaction to these tech stocks who are reporting good numbers we've got some gap ups in microsoft and netflix and we've still got a bunch more earnings to come at amazon meta apple and a few others and we'll just have to see whether they can hold their gap ups because regardless of the numbers it's how the market reacts to it that's the most important thing and as we can see here in the nasdaq triple q's we just bounced off support yesterday however we're still in a bit of a short-term downtrend so that support is still vulnerable to be broken same deal with s p 500 we're getting a little bounce here but yesterday's low could still be taken out and as you can see in the equal weight s p 500 the russell 2000 and breadth measured by new lows versus new highs overall the stock market is still pretty weak with a bit of downward momentum out there and just looking at my institutional buying percentage indicator that's still in the neutral zone just below 50 percent got a little bit of a bounce in the s p 500 oscillator 
now at 44.7. So we still might get a little bit more of a bounce here in the market. However, if we can't close above 4,300 in the next couple of days with conviction, then the market's still vulnerable to rolling over. We haven't had a huge pullback in yields yet, and things in the Middle East could still spill over. Other than that, the stock market's really hanging its hat on some really good earnings coming through of which we saw a few today and we'll keep getting a bunch more out throughout this week into next that's all for today thanks very much for sticking with click capital and hope to see you again tomorrow afternoon cheers